What's good everybody, Chris here again. Chris Goes Outdoors. Today in this video, we're gonna take a look at a couple pieces that I picked up and I'm hoping to put to use in the 2019 backpacking season. It's not really that much stuff. So without further ado, I'll jump into it and try to keep the video as short as possible. First things first, I did pay cash for all of these. None of this equipment was given to me for free by any of the manufacturers. First thing up, we got this thing right here. As many of you know, I used the Enlightened Equipment Revelation 20 while I was on the Appalachian Trail, and I thought it was a pretty good quilt overall. I did have my own little qualms with it, particularly I thought the temperature rating was kind of meh, and in general with quilts, I don't think the strap systems are really that effective, and I always found myself thinking like, if I ever really needed to strap the quilt down, I would just kind of rather have a sleeping bag anyways at that point. Getting back from the trail, I started looking at options for quilts. So something that would open up completely like a blanket, but that instead of having like a partial zippered foot box or a baffled sewn foot box, I was looking for something that zipped up completely into a sleeping bag. So essentially you could use it as a blanket when it's warm out. And if it's getting a little chilly and you really want to keep the warmth, then you can zip it up, use it as a sleeping bag. I looked at the Feather Friends Flicker. I was looking at the Ultralight 20 in particular, which was about $440, $460. And I also looked at the Enlightened Equipment. I think it's their Convert that does the same. And that's about the same price range. And I was perusing around and noticed that Nemo now offers a quilt as well. So you get kind of a, a larger manufacturer in the backpacking industry going with the ultralight quilts a little bit. So this is the Nemo Banshee 20 and it's similar in size to the long wide Enlightened Equipment Revelation 20. I think it lists on the tag the filled or finish size of the quilt is roughly 80 by 60 but it does taper down a little bit. If I use this just as a quilt I can pull it up almost just over my head, which is perfect. And then if I zip it up into a sleeping bag, it loses roughly about six inches. So it comes right to here, right below my neck, which again is perfect, but it fits the width too around me. So I can fit in it, no problem. And I'm really interested to test this thing out. So it's rated at 20 degrees. I don't know how accurate that will be. Supposedly they use, I believe it's 13 ounces of 850 fill power down. And I believe that is a hydrophobic treated down as well. I weighed it on my scale here and for just the quilt, like this is how I would take it. There's no straps because it's, you know, all zippered up. Uh, just the quilt weighs in at 26.05 ounces or 738 grams. I might do a full video on this, just kind of showcasing um, the features of the quilt because I really think that this style of backpacking quilt that like zips up, it's really cool. I really like the, uh, the design of this style of quilt. So excited to test this guy out. So next up, I also picked up this right here and this is the Nemo Switchback. It is a closed cell phone pad, which is fairly similar to this guy right here, which is the Thermarest Z-Lite sleeping pad. The biggest difference is supposedly, this is a little bit more heavy, I believe. Um, maybe an ounce or two heavier for the full length of the pad. Supposedly, it's more cushiony, which in my initial just laying on in my house does feel accurate. But it also packs down, so I would say significantly smaller. This is my Z-Lite pad right here, which has four panels cut off of it already. And this is the full length of the Nemo. So they are pretty similar in size, just to them, just like that. I've been wanting to mess around with the closed cell phone, been an avid user of the Thermarest uh, X-Lite and the X-Therm, but you know, just being able to toss this thing out and uh, go to bed on it, it's really appealing. I don't know if I'm gonna leave it the full size or chop off a couple panels like I did with my, uh, my Z-Lite over there, but we'll see. Weighed this on my scale at home, weighed in at 14.75 ounces or 418 grams. Uh, another thing I picked up, and this is a smaller item. You can see here, this is my Z-Pax bear bag that I used out on the Appalachian Trail. It still works and it's you know pretty good for what it is. It's got some holes like that. I ended up picking up one of these. 
this is from Light AF, and the main reason I picked this up was because I really liked having a Cuban food bag. It's nice and light, but it's also pretty significantly larger than the Z-Packs one I bought. Um, I'm pretty sure that Z-Packs now includes one roughly this size anyways with their bear bag kits now. When I bought this, this was the standard size they included. It worked for me, but I really like the idea of just having a bigger food bag because I eat and I eat really well. So uh, one of the biggest differences too about this is that the bottom is flat. So when you load it up, you can you know, throw all your stuff in and then it stands up. It's a, a nice little touch for sure. And you can kind of use it as a windscreen supposedly too. I have not even taken this out yet and I've had it since November. Uh, this is kind of specifically in the event that I do another long distance hike. That way I'll have enough room for a ton of food. So over the winter, I was messing around with this right here. This is the Granite Gear Crown VC60, which gonna be honest, phenomenal pack. It, uh, it was really doing well for me out on the winter trails in the whites. And that was with a ton of gear. Uh, my full winter overnight load packs this thing to the brim. So <laughs> I gotta keep things dangling off the sides for those winter overnights. And the pack did really well. I uh, really like it. I think it's reasonably priced. I tossed the uh, Z-Packs pouches that I had on my old Arc Hall onto here, as well as one of the, uh, the shoulder pouches. And it weighs in right around, uh, right about 36 ounces, uh, 1,020 grams. Great overall pack, fits me pretty well. I got it in the tall, but it is not waterproof. And for a lot of people, that might not be a big deal. Uh, you know, put a pack liner in, pack cover, whatever, you'll be fine. Uh, but I use a lot of electronics on the trail, especially if I were to do a long distance hike. I really like the idea of having a not necessarily waterproof, but highly, highly water resistant pack, just cause it's, it's a lot of electronics. So I'm testing that out, but I also picked up this and I'm not gonna lie, this is more than likely the choice I'm going to make. And this right here is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear 3400 Southwest. So I went with the Southwest over the Windrider just cause I thought that this was kind of more substantial. Not that I was particularly worried about, you know, the netting on the Windrider from what I've seen. Uh, it's pretty beefy, but I like this. I like that it's kind of clean looking, you know, when you stuff the amount of crap <laughs> that I like to keep outside of my, uh, my backpack. So I went with the Southwest specifically for that reason. If they had accidentally mailed me a Windrider, I would have used that either way. But I've been messing with this. I got it in black and this thing too has been very comfortable. I've had it out with the full winter overnight loadout and it carried very well. The updated hip belt pockets are great, can fit a ton of stuff in them. I don't know how it was before because I had never used it, but it's been, uh, it's been good, good so far. And this pack weighs in right around 35 ounces or 1,000 grams. You can see that here. So I got um, enough for like a, a little bit more for a winter day hike in here at the moment, just so you can see it. Um, and yeah, we'll be messing around with this a little bit more uh, for the rest of the season, so I can kind of more accurately gauge how well this one is actually working for me compared to the Granite Gear Crown VC60. So you may see all this gear and say it's a lot of bigger stuff, Chris, but this is 100% just in theory if I were going on a, uh, another long distance hike, just testing out some stuff that I would use in the event that that happened. So we'll continue testing some gear out. Excited to put the, um, the Nemo Banshee to test for, uh, for real. I'm really excited to test that thing out. It's very promising to me. Uh, it's like exactly what I was looking for. And with that said, where I haven't really used too much of this gear besides the uh, Crown and the Hyperlite, I'm not recommending any of the gear to anyone. Do your own research and see what works best for you. And that's gonna do it everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I uh, hope the video was entertaining, helpful in some way, shape or form. Excited for the 2019 backpacking season, I can, uh, I can assure you. And uh, plenty more videos to come. Just keeping it kind of low key as the uh, end of winter is dwindling down. We'll see you out there on the trails. Take care everyone.
Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.